Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great day. Yesterday, Monday was fabulous. Now we are Tuesday. I can't believe, it's like, I feel like 24 hours just passed so quickly. I know I talk about this time. Time really is precious, right? It goes by so fast. So I wanted to talk to you about getting a handle on your self-talk. It's so crucial to your mental well-being. It's so important. You need to take a listen to this today. My name is Leslie Cadet. I am an empowerment coach and I help my clients learn these popular triggers so that they manage their emotions and get back to what's important, which is really looking after their lives, you know, pursuing their dreams and aspirations and turning their visions for their lives into their realities. So before I get started, I'm going to invite a couple of friends. So we're just going to do that real quick. And one more friend. Here we go. Last but not least. Oops. Oh, here we go. And one more. As you can hear, my dog in the background because my husband is leaving for work. So here we go. We're done. Okay, so today I want to talk to you again about getting a handle on your self talk is crucial to your mental well being. Here, Jackson, going over there. So, why is it so important for you to get a handle on your self talk? And why is it crucial to your mental well being? Well, number one, because you listen to your inner voice more than you listen to others. Now, listening to your inner voice is good as long as your inner voice is not your inner villain. You know, the one that always tells you that you're unworthy, you're undeserving, you're undesirable. You see where I'm going with this, right? Number two, it's not only important for your overall well-being, but your mind needs to be strong and steady and focused and clear. And if your inner villain is always making all of your decisions and stating all of your truths, you'll start to believe it. And sooner rather than later, it'll start manifesting as your reality. But before you start to get that control over your self-talk, you have to figure out where does it come from? So I did a bit of research and found an article on healthline.com. And part of the article talks about categories, which was interesting to me. So it goes on to say, quote, before you can learn to practice more self-talk, you must first identify negative thinking. This type of thinking and self-talk generally falls into four categories. So here's the categories. Number one, personalizing. You blame yourself for everything. This is so, I, I, I'm working with someone right now who's had those issues about blaming herself for everything. Even if someone else was to blame, she'll actually flip it the blame onto herself. Uh, number two, magnifying. You focus on the negative aspects of a situation, ignoring any and all of the positive. Number three, catastrophizing. <laughs> Big one, you expect the worst and you rarely let logic or reason persuade you otherwise. And last but not least, polarizing. You see the world in black and white, or good and bad. There's nothing in between. There's no middle ground for processing and categorizing life events. So that was part of this healthline.com article. Wow, right? I mean, who knew that it could be broken down this way, but it makes sense. We are quick to blame ourselves for our circumstances, saying things like we're not worthy or deserving, and that's why things don't go our way. We'll also focus on everything bad that is happening in our lives and we'll often miss out on celebrating those amazing little wins in our lives, such as getting a compliment from our boss or a coworker or a client saying thank you or a job well done or I couldn't have done this without you. We forget about those, those are wins. Everything that's positive is a win. Why? Because we're more geared, why are we like this? Because we are more geared to focus on the negative because it makes us feel a certain way, like immediately, and we're allowing our emotions to be in the driver's seat. Or we start to imagine the worst thing that could happen before we've even started something. You know, you start, and you talk yourself out of doing things because you start thinking the oh, what ifs and the what coulds happen. Like a project, for example, you start something and then you start second guessing what you've done or what you're what you've done so far what you're doing and then you start imagining that it won't possibly turn out great because you're not good at anything and you're not willing to see the gray area it's black and white only in your world period there's only two ways for things to turn out they work 
or they don't. And you often believe that they won't. And when it doesn't work out, you believe that you're a failure and that you always have been and always will be. And you'll even go one step further and tell yourself that you knew that this was how it would turn out anyways. The thing is, if something doesn't work out, it's not a failure. It's just a moment for you to actually reflect back on what worked within this plan that you had, what didn't work, fix what didn't work and try it again. The only way you fail is if you give up on yourself, but you're not willing to let in the gray. So now do you see why it's so important to your overall mental well-being to get a handle on your self-talk? When you start to recognize your patterns of negative thinking, then you can start to work to turn them into positive thinking. You have to learn to quiet that inner villain. I've said this before. You have to quiet that inner villain, and it starts with you talking back to that voice in your head and saying, you are not willing to listen anymore. You are wrong. I can and I will. You have to be, al be able to say that you are not willing to allow your power over your emotions to be controlled by your inner bully because your inner villain is an inner bully, is your bully. It's bullying you, telling you that you're undeserving, you're unworthy, you're undesirable. You could never do this. Who said that you were even qualified, right? It's hard to do, I know. It's worth it though because you are worth it. So here are some things that you can do. I, I, I actually went on to um, going back through the uh, article and they have some great ways of flipping negative self-talk. So for example, I'll disappoint everyone. This is the negative one. If I, I'll disappoint everyone if I change my mind. Yeah, so you know how you commit to certain things and now you feel like you're overwhelmed? Your emotions are starting to get to you. You're overwhelmed and you're like, oh, I can't commit to this anymore. I, I don't want to do this anymore. But you're afraid because you're going to disappoint everyone if you change your mind. The positive way to flip it is saying, I have the power to change my mind. Others will understand. And if they don't, well, you know, you have to look after you just like they have to look after themselves, right? So you have to be able to be strong enough to say that you have the power to change your mind. Another negative one is I failed and embarrassed myself. So yes, you failed at, you feel like you failed at a project or some kind of launch that you did and you feel like now you're a failure you're embarrassed people are looking at you laughing at you talking about you saying i knew it and you start then allowing your inner bully to start saying yep told you told you so like, whoever thought that you could do something like this right flip it and say instead i'm proud of myself for even trying that took courage because it did it did take courage for you to even just step out of your comfort zone and try to do something that's something that you actually believed in and if it didn't work like i said you just find out look back at it and see okay what did work and what didn't work what can i tweak and make better and try again and here's another negative one which i know a lot of people i have someone that i've been trying to help her to stop body shaming herself which is really really bad and especially I know it's hard because in society, unfortunately, that is what seems to be the norm. You know, you look at all these skinny models and, you know, that's like a whole other story, a whole other topic. But what I'm getting at is body shaming is bad. So the negative one is I'm overweight and out of shape. I might as well not bother, you know, um, or saying something like I look like a big blob of fat. I mean, that's horrible, right? You're looking at, you have a very negative, poor self body image. Instead, flip it saying, you know what? I am capable and strong and I want to get healthier for me. So I'm going to take the steps necessary to do that because I'm worth it. Just if it's negative, just flip it and say it over and over again and do something. Just do it. Just go for it. Here's another one, negative one. I let everyone on my team down when I didn't score. So this is for someone in sports or it could be anything. I, I, I let everyone on my team down when this pitch didn't go well and we didn't get the client. Negative. Yeah, right. So that's a really negative thing to say. 
and you'll get yourself into that low self-esteem, self-doubt, don't believing in yourself. And the positive is, again, you can say this was a team event, like sports are a team event, we win and lose together. This was a team event for my company, we win and lose together. You know, don't take it all on yourself, the burden of holding that on yourself. It's too heavy and it doesn't serve you. Here's another negative one. I've never done this before and I'll be bad at it. So this is where you can talk yourself out of doing anything, anything and everything. So, you know, it, you look at a project, you're something that you want to do and you're thinking, oh yeah, no, no, might as not, not even try. Your inner bully saying, who do you think you are? Why are you even going to try? Don't even bother. You'll never do well, right? Instead say, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to learn from others and grow because it will be. <laughs> Allow yourself to fill your cup. Uh, last negative one, there's just no way this will work. That happens a lot, right? That gets said a lot about anything in life. You can say, this, just, there's just no way this will work. The positive thing that you can do is say, I can and will give it my all to make it work. The only way something fails is if you fail yourself by not even going for it and getting back up and dusting off your pants if it didn't work the first time and looking at what did work and tweaking the things that didn't work and going back at it. Things Sometimes things take more than one try, more than one effort. So don't give up on you. So number, I'm gonna go through some things to make sure that you, to help you with your negative self-talk. Number one, identify your negative self-talk traps where you will like, most likely be triggered. So you're working on a project with someone, for example, who's well-liked and respected in your company. And so now you're feeling the pressure and you have the potential to fall into that comparison syndrome trap. Don't do this to yourself. Don't ever do that. Don't compare yourself to someone else. We're unique and individual for a reason. We all have our own perspective. We all bring our unique abilities, our thoughts, thought processes, our creativity to the table. You were picked to be on this project for a reason. Someone saw your potential. And so just allow yourself to be you and do the best that you can. No self-doubt allowed. Leave that at the door. As soon as you walk into your office, leave it at the door, okay? Number two, check in with how you're feeling. Make sure you do this um, often, especially if you're having a bad day. Stop to reflect on how you're feeling and evaluate your inner self-talk. Is it negative? Is it super negative? How can you turn it around? You know, make sure that you have a positive thought for every negative thought. So as I said, I shared you these positive and negative thoughts. I'll post them uh, a little bit in the uh, comments just so that you can have an idea. They came from, I said that uh, article online, but I, uh, from healthline.com, but I feel like they were really good examples. Number three, find some humor to fall back on. Laughter is the best medicine after all. It really is when it comes to relieving your stress and tension. So when you need a boost, find a way to laugh. Google jokes online or a comedian that you really love, funny animal videos, you know, one funny thing I love is um, <laughs> there's this video that's gone viral, you know, if I just say, Linda, Linda, listen, you're not listening, you're the little kid that's arguing with mom, and uh, mom has, you know, much, you know, she's got something to say to, to the son, and he's just not getting it, and he's telling her she's not listening to him, and and it just sounds like he's he's actually mimicking his dad. <laughs> So he's obviously picked up on mom and dad arguing, and that's how he's learned to argue with mom. So be careful. You know your kiddos are listening. <laughs> Anyways, going back through today, getting a handle on your self-talk is really super important. It is crucial to your well-being, to your mental well-being. If you allow your inner villain, who I like to call your inner bully, drive the car all the time, state your truths as to who you are, and this is how you're going to start showing up in the world. You're going to start believing it and it's going to become your truth and your reality. So it's really super important that you learn to spot that, you know, your inner villain is doing a lot of the talking and allow yourself to realize, okay, I'm, you know, checking in with yourself. How do I feel? Am I feeling like 
really bad. I have a bad day. Did I have a bad moment? What happened? How can I turn this around as far as my negative self-talk? Find ways to be positive with your self-talk. If you're saying that you're not good, I told you so, you messed up so bad. You know what? I always feel like owning up to your mistakes is a is a really great part of integrity. I think it's doing the right thing, but don't beat yourself up over it, okay? Owning up to a mistake, fine. Figuring out a way to fix it, great. Beating yourself up, no. If you continuously beat yourself up over something that you have, you really just, you know, it just happened and there's really nothing you can do. It happened, it happened, it happened. That's it. It's in the past now. So now let's see what we can do moving forward to make things better. Let's be more positive. Let's get ourselves out of this funk. I've had those days, I've had those moments and I've had to reach out to people saying, I need a, a boost. I need some self-confidence boost or I need a, a, a boost for um, just to get myself in the right mindset. It's just, we're human. I'm not perfect. No one is. We never will be. We can never be perfect, but we can always strive to be the best version of ourselves. So I hope this was helpful for you today. And I ask, please, that you just, if you share this video, please help me and help others by sharing this video because this message needs to get out to more people. People need to realize, men and women, young and old, need to realize that mental well-being is important for your overall well-being so that you live a life that's happy and healthy and vibrant and exciting. So again, as I said, please help me by sharing this video with others. I hope that this helped you. And if, there, if you have any questions, DM me. If you'd like to talk more, maybe get a little more clear on some of these self-talk issues, you know, DM me and we'll uh, set up a 15 minute call. Let's get, uh, let's, uh, Get a little more clear and focused for you. I can help you with that. I love to. I love to talk to you. I love to share with you. And if you have anything you want to listen, want to hear more about, you know, please message me because you know I will. I take into consideration any of your requests, you your your comments, what you're looking for, what you need, and I'll be there to help you get through those things. Because what do you want to do? You want to learn to spot your triggers so that you can manage your emotions so that your emotions don't manage you. And when you manage your emotions, you have a more clear and focused way to respond so that your rewards are positive rather than negative, right? That's what your ultimate goal in life is as far as when it comes to your mental well-being. So I hope that you have a great day. Thank you again for watching. I hope that you have, you have um, the attitude of gratitude because an attitude of gratitude will get you through whatever life throws at you, it gets you, you're in the right mindset, it'll help you get through whatever life is throwing at you today. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Lessa Cadet. I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients learn to spot their triggers so that they can manage their emotions and get back to what's important, which is pursuing their dreams and aspirations and turning their visions for their lives into their realities. I hope that you have a great day. I want you to love the life you live, and I want you to start living the life that you love. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye for now.